Therefore, in other words, in order to be sure that you're ready to come with the Lord, if, if you are already in the ground, you will come back with him. Your body will be glorified and come up and you'll be instantly transformed. If you are left here on the earth, you will go up to meet him in the air. Therefore, how do we get ready for that? Put to death, verse, says, verse 5 says, your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, all idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. He's coming to deliver us who love him. And those who are still walking in lust are, are in for the wrath of a holy God. These are the things in which you once walked yourself and lived in them. But now, verse 8 says, you yourselves are to put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man. And then in verse 12 of that chapter, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, put on kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. And if anyone has a complaint against one another, even as Christ forgave you, so also you must do. But of all, put on love which is the bond of perfection. This passage is an eschatological passage. That means it has to do with the end times. Put off some things and put on some things because Jesus is coming back to get those who have put off sin and put on him. And he's coming back to judge the wrath of God, those who have not done that. You say, well, that's the people who never got saved. No, he's talking to Christians. Seeing that Jesus is coming back and that he could come back any day now to lift the loving out of a doomed world and leave the lustful behind, how should we be living? We should be putting off the things of the world, putting off the things of the flesh, putting on the things of, the, of God, putting on the things of the Spirit, putting off lust and putting off love. About the time of Paul's death, a few years after he wrote Colossians, Peter answers the same question, how to be ready. In the last chapter of his last letter, 2 Peter chapter 3, I'm going to summarize for you in just a moment the first part of that chapter. He simply says that uh, there are Christians who willfully forget, willfully forget that he's a God of justice and judgment. They forget that he created the world and then because of sin destroyed the world with a flood. And then Peter tells them this, he's going to do it again. And it won't be water, but fire next time. Following those words, Peter says in verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness. He's coming back. He's simply patient. He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the point of repentance. But the day of the Lord, Peter says, is coming like a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. And here's that key word again, therefore. In other words, since that's going to happen at any moment, how should we live? How do we stay ready? Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord. Because of that, 
which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness, righteousness dwells. Last night, when Brother Terry Trammell finished his message on the second coming, I had no idea he was going to preach it. He said that every person in the congregation can know whether they're ready to go or not in the second coming when they hear a sermon on the second coming. When you hear it, if your heart is leaping within you and you're saying like John in the last chapter of Revelation, even so, come, Lord Jesus. You're ready. But if you're troubled by this message, troubled by these scriptures, if you can't wait, for it to get over, if you're trying to get your mind into the restaurant or, or the walk you're going to take uh, this afternoon or the nap uh, uh, that you're going to enjoy, if you're hoping that I won't preach this message again any time soon, it is likely that you are not ready. Which describes you best this morning? Have you been putting off the old lust of this world and putting on God's love so that you will be ready when he comes or calls? So that your heart cries out for him to return as soon as possible? Or have you been putting off fully pursuing a holy life of witness and putting on a, a front of full consecration and godliness in front of other Christians. I've come here this morning to ask you just one question. Are you ready? As Sister Becky comes to play softly on the piano, I'm about to open this altar. And it's not for one or two, it's for everybody. This is an invitation to the church. And if you can't make it to this altar, I want you to make an altar of the place where you are. Make no mistake about it. The night is far spent. It could happen at any moment. There is not one prophecy left that needs to be fulfilled before the rapture of the church. And be assured of this, Jesus will come in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Jesus will come as a thief in the night. And be assured of this, the time is closer than when you first believed. As Sister Becky plays, I invite you to, make, to find a place at this altar or these pews or make an altar where you are. And talk to the Lord about it. And say, Lord, am I ready? Lord, I want to be ready. Lord, is there anything left I need to put off? Is there anything left that I need to put on? Lord, I want to be found ready when you come or when you call. These altars are open.